And with us on the broadcast this minute is our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sadhan Sibyl, who has been stationed in Washington, D.C., tracking each of those developments very closely. Uh, Sadhan, just a short while back, the Foreign Secretary of India, while addressing that briefing, uh, has responded to your question about uh, the AUKUS alliance finding a mention uh, in the discussions between the Australian and the Indian uh, Prime Ministers. Uh, he has said that the Australian Prime Minister spoke about the rationale uh, behind initiating the AUKUS alliance. Uh, we have been discussing whether or not the AUKUS row will impact India in any way. Uh, so this is a very significant statement coming in from the Foreign Secretary about those discussions. Well, yes, Molly, a significant statement by the Foreign Secretary uh, confirming first AUKUS was discussed during uh, the bilateral between uh, the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Also, how the Australian side uh, basically touched upon uh, the rationale of the Australian side initiating this entire uh, uh, project, uh, this pact, uh, something that, of course, the Australian side has been saying publicly, how it needs to increase its capability emits uh, uh, an environment that uh, has seen rules-based order being questioned, uh, specifically, of course, because of uh, the Chinese militarization. We know China has been engaged in a rapid militarization, and that, of course, is a worrisome factor. Uh, but the fact that the Australian side, uh, for the second time now, uh, have discussed uh, AUKUS with uh, the Indian side shows that how they're keeping Indian side up to date and in the loop regarding the entire pact. Because remember, uh, the the Australian Prime Minister had had a phone conversation with the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi hours before uh, the AUKUS pact was announced. And not only the Australian Prime Minister, the Australian Foreign Minister, the Defence Minister, both of them spoke uh, to the Indian side as well regarding the AUKUS pact. So this is an important development uh, confirmation, first of all. Uh, but uh, when it comes to Quad and AUKUS, largely it is beneficial to Quad in terms of uh, the capabilities of one Quad member, that is Australia, being increased. And that helps the uh, quad member countries as well. They have been uh, quad not by that name but by a different name. Malabar exercises have been uh, engaging with each other. Uh, the, uh, the phase two happened just uh, a few days ago in Bay of Bengal. Earlier it was uh, in Guam, the phase one. Uh, but uh, uh, the big impact of AUKUS obviously is expected to be on the uh, France, India and Australia trilateral, something that we have been talking about. Uh, Indian side is hopeful uh, that uh, both Australia and France will be able to mend ties because ultimately, uh, as uh, sources have been saying uh, uh, to us, that uh, they would not like to allies to have problems when there are bigger issues. That, of course, means China uh, to deal with. Uh, but largely, this was a very substantive meeting, both with the Australian Prime Minister, with the Japanese Prime Minister, uh, Suga. Uh, these three countries also have their own separate trilateral uh, focusing on supply chain initiative, something that the Foreign Secretary also talked about uh, uh, during his briefing, under which uh, the focus is to form an alternate uh, a supply route, uh, given that the current supply routes are heavily dependent on China. And that is uh, uh, bad news in terms of increasing Chinese hegemony, how Chinese have been engaging uh, in uh, uh, in 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 trade uh, tiff or whether it is uh, territorial issues, uh, uh, whether it's with uh, Japan when it comes to Senkaku Islands, whether it's with India, line of actual control, whether it is uh, with uh, Australia, the trade uh, war, a full-blown trade war, in fact. Uh, so largely like-minded countries coming together in various formats, whether it's Quad, whether it's uh, uh, trilateral. Today, of course, is a key day uh, when the first in-person Quad meeting will take place. It's still uh, evening time here in Washington, but obviously it is uh, Friday morning in uh, New Delhi. So the meeting, the quad happens at late night Indian Standard Time at 11.30 p.m., post 11.30 p.m. Uh, in the White House. Right. The other uh, key aspect, uh, Siddhant, uh, from that press briefing has been uh, the comment on Pakistan, uh, the comment on cross-border terrorism for India, specifically uh, during that uh, bilateral uh, with the American Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, while responding to that question, uh, the uh, Foreign Secretary outlining uh, that uh, the Vice President did talk about uh, the uh, 
threat when it comes to Pakistan and so Moto referred to Pakistan's role in terrorism so that these groups do not impact US and Indian security. And this interestingly happening just hours after the meeting between uh, US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and uh, the Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi in New York. So a uh, different uh, message from New York and a stronger message from Washington. And the fact that the Foreign Secretary used the word motor shows that how the American side is aware about the duplicity when it comes to engaging with Islamabad. Yes, of course, uh, Pakistan is playing a role in terms of uh, uh, evacuation of the his citizen but it's also playing another role a, a much darker role in terms of supporting uh, terror groups and of course it is well known that how uh, Pakistan has played its own role in the formation of the current Taliban government which has uh, uh, Haqqani members of the Haqqani network a well known terror organization uh, just days before uh, the government was to be announced we know the ISI chief was in a hotel in Kabul that was uh, uh, a picture that was not seen very positively globally the fact that a foreign country's uh, top intel intelligence officer is seen in a hotel room in uh, in in Kabul shows that uh, how Pakistanis were keen to work on optics how they were keen to show that they now have a huge influence or leeway in Kabul but largely uh, Pakistan remains a worry for both New Delhi and Washington it has been an epicenter of terrorism and now with the Americans gone from Afghanistan uh, Pakistan Pakistani uh, terror groups are likely to use that territory as well uh, right. against India. Of course, India has upped its security issue, uh, security as well when it comes to dealing with these challenges over the past uh, two decades. Right, and the Afghanistan crisis has uh, far-reaching implications for the entire region, specifically for India, and that remains a top priority uh, for the discussions to be held with the U.S. President uh, as well. We're leaving it there for the moment. Satan, thanks very much for those uh, inputs. Uh, we are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.